Um, so yeah, thank you and, and welcome everyone back to this afternoon's parallel session. So um, this session is on career development and we have speakers from Glasgow and from Imperial College London. Um, just as a reminder, if people can just mute their microphones and turn off their cameras just during the session speakers. Um, and please do post some questions in, in the chat as we go along for the, the speakers. There will be time at the end to, to kind of um, post those questions and to the speakers. Um, so yeah, so we're gonna get started. Um, I'd just like to thank you everybody for, yeah, for attending this afternoon. So our, our session today is entitled Professional Career Development for Technical Staff, The Story So Far. So we are um, joined by Ailish Harike, who's the Apprenticeships Manager, and Alison Hunter, who's the Technical Operations Manager in the Department for Life Sciences. Uh, and we're also pleased to welcome Paul Patterson, who's Chief Technician for Institute of Molecular Cell and Systems Biology, and his colleague Brian Robb, Technical Services Manager in the School of Science and Engineering at the University of Glasgow. So thank you guys, and I will hand over now to Ailish and Alison. So we're going to start us off. Thanks very much and thank you for the opportunity to, to say a few words about um, career development for technicians at Imperial College. Um, Jed, Jedi, would it be possible to share our, our slides? Thank you. Um, while, while those load, um, just to introduce myself, I'm, I'm Ailish Harikai and I work within the People and Organisational Development Team, which sits within HR at Imperial. And the main areas that I focus on are apprenticeships and technical staff development. So I'm delighted to be joined on the call by my colleague, Alison Hunter. Um, Alison is Technical, Technical Operations Manager within our Department of Life Sciences. And on top of that substantial day job, Alison is also really pivotal in the delivery of our, of our technician commitment. Um, next slide, please. So I had a message that everyone was muted. Hopefully, I'm not sure how much of that that you missed. <laughs> Um, but I was, I was just explaining that we're going to give a snapshot of technical services at Imperial, um, an overview of the learning and development offer we have available to staff. We're going to take you through some of the barriers we've experienced in terms of technical staff participation. And we'd like to end by sharing some of the success stories. So areas where we've really um, managed to engage the technical community with the offer. And um, so next slide, please. Do you want to know what it was? I, we've got some of the slides slightly obliterated as well, Jodie, if, if it's possible to do something about that. Um, i just go to the, the next slide for technicians at Imperial, please. Brilliant, thank you. So we've got approximately 650 technical staff uh, at the college, out of about 8,000 staff in total, with 18,200 students. And as well as the traditional core and research funded laboratory staff, we include computing and maintenance staff as learning and development in CPD is just as relevant for them. And all of these groups have representation on our technician commitment steering group. Um, Imperial was an original signatory to the technician commitment in May 2017, and our stage one impact report was accepted in January this year. Next slide, please, Jodi. Um, so we're very fortunate at Imperial to have a very well established and well resourced organisational development function and we have a very good provision for all professional, technical and operational staff. And this slide just gives a flavour of some of the main things that we have available to support staff in their professional and career development. Um, so we have a suite of career development support, which, which includes things like coaching and mentoring, interview skills, networking skills, career development strategies workshops. We've also got a very good suite of leadership and management development support. Um, Alongside that, we've got our core skills development program, which covers things from project management to communication skills, finance and everything in between. Um, we've got an excellent health and safety training team and, and a very good provision there. We've also got various routes for staff to access sponsorship should they want to undertake qualifications. 
and that can include direct sponsorship by a department, our study loan scheme, and also the apprenticeship levy route. And alongside all of that, we've got um, well-established staff networks, including our technicians network, and lots of opportunities for staff to engage with external networking opportunities. Um, what we have found, though, is that despite having a very good central offer, technical staff tend to engage less with the central provision than other groups of staff, with the exception of, of safety training. Um, can you show the next slide, please? Thank you. And hopefully this slide sort of demonstrates that so that the first data set shows um, technical staff participation in core skills training, um, both the number of attendances and the percentage of attendances overall that, that were technicians. Um, so as a guide, um, technicians at Imperial make up about 15% of our support staff and 8% of staff overall. So we would expect a slightly higher level of attendance from this group. But what we can see is that it did increase slightly across the, the first two years listed. Um, which kind of coincided with, with the, the delivery of our Technician Commitment Action Plan. But it, then it did decline again um, in 2019-20, but that, that would mainly have been the impact of COVID, I think. The next data set shows technical staff participation in leadership and management sessions. And you can see that that's actually declining year by year um, in terms of engagement from technicians. And if you could just click again and show the final data set, please. That would be great. Thank you. So the, the final data set shows um, technicians' level of satisfaction with learning and development provided by Imperial as measured in our all staff survey. And you can see that that's actually improved between 10, 2017 and 2019, again, coinciding with, with a lot of our technician commitment activity. Um, next slide, please. Thanks. Um, so we want to keep increasing the levels of engagement for technicians, but I think many of you will recognise these co common bar barriers. I haven't got time. What's it for? Uh, nobody's supporting me to do this. And so um, next slide, please, Jedi. So how do we overcome these barriers? So one of the things that Ailish does is that she takes the courses offered and just highlights these in the technician's newsletter as a reminder, as a prompt, especially for the, the management training and personal development courses. And I think having smaller group meetings within the department, departmental meetings and college fora gives the, the technicians a chance to talk issues through with each other um, and encourages the junior staff to have a voice and learn by example through, through that networking, that shared experience. And it's been really refreshing to hear um, peer to peer support for continuing professional development and different courses, people suggesting things to each other that have helped them personally. And I think just allowing time for, for that culture change to happen. Um, it's not an overnight process. You have to start somewhere, uh, keep, keep the bar high and keep pressing forward for, for them to, to join in to do that. Next slide, please, Jodi. So I think we have three success stories to tell. Ailish is going to discuss apprenticeships and professional registra registration, and I'm going to talk about our technicians network. Next slide, please, Jenny. So we have quite a long history of employing apprentices in technical roles at Imperial. And at one time we had a very large um, technician training scheme um, that sort of fizzled out in the 90s. And then um, back in 2011, that was re-established. And since then, we've taken in an annual cohort of engineering technician apprentices specialising in electronic and mechanical engineering. So that was quite well established prior to the technician commitment. Um, but as part of our technician commitment, we um, committed to developing new streams um, within the apprenticeship scheme. And this year we've recruited laboratory and maintenance technician apprentices, which is an exciting development. And that activity is certainly something that we hope to, to grow. But what I wanted to focus on for this talk really is apprenticeships as an opportunity for existing staff. And um, so people on the call will be aware of the apprenticeship levy and all the, and all the reforms to apprenticeship 
kind of design and the funding model, which kind of started to take effect in around 2017. And since then, um, apprenticeships at Imperial have become very much an established route for existing staff to access development. Um, and Teddy, if you could just click again, I can show you um, some figures in relation to that. So, so we have 135 apprentices in total at the moment. Um, 13 of those are apprentices in the traditional sense. So people we're bringing in um, into the college early on in their careers and we're training them up to become proficient in, in particular types of roles. Now, these are largely technician roles. We've got 12 of our 13 who are technician apprentices. Um, but alongside that, where we've seen the most growth since the advent of the apprenticeship levy is around existing staff access and development. And we have 122 members of staff who are doing this and technicians are really well represented. So they're 17 of the 122, which, which is really, really great. And it's something that's really growing. Um, if you could show the next slide, please. We thought we'd share a case study of, of one of our technicians who's doing this. This is our colleague, Dr. Adam Davis. Um, he's teaching lab manager within the Department of Chemistry, and he's currently undertaking a level seven senior, senior leadership apprenticeship which incorporates an MBA. So an MBA is something that Adam had been thinking about for, for some time, but the costs were, were prohibitive. These are, these are expensive qualifications. Um, but what's been possible is for the apprenticeship program to provide funding for that, and also to give him time to access the development. So people will probably be aware that when people undertake an apprenticeship, there's a commitment to them having 20% development, development time. So Adam has a chemistry background, um, so that's obviously vital for his role in, in the department, but he did feel there were some gaps in terms of managing financial information, leading a growing team and, and so on. Um, and what he's finding is that the MBA just really provides kind of a bit of gap filling, it's, it's formal knowledge and, and, and theory uh, on, on leadership, business and leadership topics. Um, but I think what he's really valued above all is the networking opportunity. So he's come into contact through the MBA with, with learners from, from a range of organisations at a similar point in their careers to him. And I think that learning has, has been really valuable. Um, next slide, please. And we also wanted to touch on professional registration as part of the talk. Um, so as part of our technician commitment, Imperial um, departments have committed to funding all the costs related to professional registration and professional body membership for their technical staff, um, which removes the kind of financial barriers that, that existed before in terms of undertaking this process. But what we've also put in place is um, a structured program of support for our science technicians who want to undertake professional registration. And we launched that in 2019. Um, and what it involves is attending a series of four workshops over three months with an applicant support mentor who sort of guides people through the process. Um, we, we did that in person initially and then it switched to a kind of a virtual a virtual program. And um, over three cohorts we've had 31 people come through and, and, and succeed with them um, with professional registration and we have a fourth cohort who are close to submission. So it's been a real success story. 100% of the people who've done this course said they would recommend it and it's kind of spreading through through word of mouth and we're in the process of putting something similar in place for our engineering tech technicians. Um, but what I would say is as well as well as being a really important milestone for technicians to, to get professional registration, you know, they're achieving a professional ben benchmark. It's a source of great pride. Um, but in terms of the wider development piece, I think it really emphasizes for, for people that CPD is not kind of an optional add on that you do if you fancy and if you have time, it's actually an integral part of your work role. And we've found that people who commit to professional registration are making kind of CPD commitments and are people who are very engaged with the wider learning and development offer. So it's, so it's been a real success from that point of view as well. And next slide, please. Can you just go back one, Jedi, please? That's great. So um, having a technician's network reinforces the professional and career development opportunities that uh, the more formal training gives and it, it, it's an opportunity uh, to show best practice uh, to share best practice up and down that food chain certainly departmental initiatives influence institutional ones 
and the, the sort of external networking uh, events that we have and back down again. So just having that big wide network um, is, is, is important and giving opportunities for presentation skills and speaking opportunities, which are not normally part of the day to day job, helps develop staff and give them confidence and uh, they take pride in their own work. And um, you can really see how they blossom when they do that. And talking about their own work really inspires other people uh, within the institution and outside of it. And next slide, please, Jedi. So how have these networks uh, helped? So I'm just gonna give you the example uh, in life sciences. When I came six years ago, it was very siloed. There was no communication to or between the technicians in the, in the department. And we have about 60 technicians in total across two campuses. And that's uh, out of a staff of 650 in the department. Uh, all of the technicians uh, are now engaged in professional development. And between 2017 and 2020, 16 attendances were for, were for management courses and 27 for professional development. They're now helping each other informally. And uh, for, as part of the professional registration, one, uh, one lady actually got a national CPD award from her professional body. And there's much more recognition. Uh, I think it's just disappeared off the bottom of the slider. Uh, citizenship awards, college awards from the provost and the president and external national awards um, have been gained in this department. So we need a workforce of fluid, agile and engaged technicians. And I think one of the barriers that we sort of referenced earlier was, well, where does all of this learning and professional development lead? And I think um, for my staff, it's been very motivating to see that five technicians from within the department who've talked to them about professional registration journey, the courses that they've attended, the conference attendance and their career history have now moved into better paid, higher level jobs. Next slide, please, Jody. So thank you very much from Eilish and myself for allowing us to come and speak to you today. And I think we're going to take questions after the next presentation from the University of Glasgow. So thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Eilish and Alison. Um, so yeah, handing over to you, Paul, if you want to share, share your slides. Yeah, we can see those, Paul. I mean, you can't hear me. I was, I was muted there. We <laughs> can hear you now. Which, which, as it goes along, he might actually be quite pleased about. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to speak about, um, basically what we're not going to speak about is what EOD does. That's the employment, uh, employee organisation development. We're going to speak about what we've done through the Commission Commitment in terms of career development. or not Because we've got all the stuff, the health and safety stuff behind that as well. So I'm just going to give you some ideas of what we're doing. Brian, at the end of it, is going to speak for the last uh, three or four minutes about what happens on the ground in terms of in the school engineering. Uh, hopefully, I won't be going too quickly. Uh, my wife always tells me I speak too quickly. Probably when we're from Scotland here, we should have subtitles, but we haven't got any. <laughs> but we'll go along. So I'm Paul Patterson, Chief Technician for Molecular Cellular and Systems Biology in NPLS, and Brian is the Technical Services Manager at uh, Laboratories of Logistics in the School of Engineering. So the story so far, basically I'll give you a bit of background. Um, our university uh, steering group is led by Professor Frank Cotton. He's the Vice Principal for the university. That's been really, really important for us in getting things like career development going, because he's the link between a lot of the university um, organization and committees. We've also, one thing that's a real, real, real bonus is having a technician commitment coordinator. Now, Ali, um, you'll probably hear from him in the, in, in the future, is bought out a day a week, and that is his job to coordinate all the things that we do around the university. We've got technician commitment champions. We've got a senior technician management network now, where we're all in together to share best practice. We've got a website and we'll get a pretty successful social media platform. Our Twitter, I think, has got 600 followers or something like that. Okay, so we're going to go internal and external career development initiatives. So some of our internal was, we've got the Associate Fellow Recognising Teaching and Excellence framework. 
We've got technician demonstrators course, research integrity, technical workshops, apprenticeship activities, secondment opportunities, and technical staff conferences. So I'm just going to go through all of these as we go along. Now, the AFRET, that is run by Learning Enhancement Academic Development Services. It's Leeds. When we said to people, you know, you need to go to Leeds to do this, they thought it was Leeds University. So we had to explain that to them. That was a that was a quite a funny thing. Anyway, they do all the enhancement of teaching within the university. So what they do is what they do, they did a certificate. Now, what is that is around is facilitating learning. But what we did find was we found that technicians weren't going on it because they would go on it and it was very, very academic based and you know going down that line. So it's technician specific workshops. That the first one we had was 54 turned up. So through that, you do some face-to-face -face courses that, that help you how to how you facilitate your teaching, how you do this, that, and the next thing. You then write a report about how you facilitate learning. Now, the good thing about this is it goes across teaching and research. So people in formal teaching can see how they facilitate the learning. Within the research, they can do it as well. It's about techniques, it's about how you do it. You write a report, somebody comes and visits you, they assess how you do the learning. They give you a feedback, you then reflect on it. It's then peer reviewed, and at the end of it, you can get one of these. So that's Glasgow University recognizing excellence in teaching. Lindsay got it last year during COVID, which was a really, which was very, very challenging indeed. And, and as Brian was saying this morning, we've had a couple of technicians who've actually moved from the university, and one of them got a job in teaching actually in Aberdeen for that. That's been a really, really successful. But again, that's tapping into the internal university. The other thing that we're, that um, leads are going to do for us is, and this is just starting, is again specific training courses for technicians who work in teaching labs. They're going to be taught demonstrator skills because they already demonstrate just now. Again, that was seen as a kind of academic thing. Um, again, this will be running uh, this session. Um, for undergraduate and postgraduate formal teaching for the technicians that do that. So that's another bit of development they can add on. The other thing we had through research and innovation was they, they reached out to the technician commitment and said that they wanted the technicians involved in research integrity. It was all about building a research culture within the university. And I have to thank Timothy Cassidy, who's now going to Oxford, who was absolutely fantastic in this. They did that. So basically what we had is we had specific courses on research integrity run for technical staff. Now that may well be my institute, we all went along together, other people went along an individual. So we all learned about research integrity and how we should be passing these things on within our lab settings, within our teaching settings, wherever. As a result of that, we've now got technician facilitators on that course. So what they do is they actually tutor on the course to PGRs, PDA staff and students. And people have, the technicians have really, really found that rewarding. Again, another development in people's uh, jobs that they're taking on. The other thing we had is Ali, as a technician commitment uh, coordinator, sat on the judging panel for the annual uh, university awards, research awards. Again, real bit of engagement, but Again, a development thing for Ali and somebody else might do that. Myself and another couple of people represented uh, the technical staff at a research culture workshops run by the Welcome. Um, I actually facilitated one of the groups in that. Again, great bit of development for me and, and, and the techs that were going along. We've also instigated locally um, some technical workshops. Um, I can give you an example of how it goes. One of them was for statistics. So what we said was, there's one, there's a general statistics work in the university, but what we said was, how can we adapt this for technical staff? So we spoke with technical staff, asked them what they would like, what they, would, what they thought would help them in their job, and the lecturer specifically on this was very, very good because he targeted it at different things that technical staff would want. This came about basically because the teaching group went on it, came to the research, came to the steering group and says, we've done this before, and we then spread best practice about it. So that's what it was. It ran over 
four days, half day sessions, um, we run it outside of term. Again, image manipulation is one of them as well. One of my techs ran a course for it, 47 turned up, um, and that was academics, postdocs, technicians, everybody. So we're trying to get that out there. John was fantastic. He was showing them how you know you can maybe manipulate an image um, accidentally to make it look better than it was. Um, and really, these are the things that you can get caught out in terms of research. And we did one in cell culture, which is just basically best practice. Our modern apprentices try and involve them in everything. So they're on our technician commitment launch. They did a video on what we do. They also sit on the, the steering group committee. This year, they were involved in the production for BBC Bytes, which was um, the thing that they were doing for schools because of COVID. So the BBC came in, our modern apprentices were setting up the experiments for them, helping the lecturers along, doing all that. So that was a great thing for them to be involved in them and they love the whole media thing. Again, they're represented in the technician commitment steering group. So commitment uh, uh, opportunities. So again, technical commitment coordinator, Ali, um, this was a chance for him to, he's not one of the, in the senior management, but now he's got that opportunity to engage with the whole of the senior management within the university. Ali's done a fantastic job. I could, I could spend a presentation on some of the stuff he's done. He's been absolutely fantastic. The other thing was University Sustainability Project. One of, it was offered for one of our technicians within the university to join that. They are now on that a whole project working party and they're out sustainability with plastics and labs, all different things. The other one we had was an ISF, ISSF link. This is where technicians could actually apply for money to do day courses, week courses, whatever. I have to say that didn't go down. That wasn't taken up very well. And I think it was just because the whole culture of it, the technicians didn't think it was for them. We tried to run workshops, but it didn't. But hopefully something like that will come back again. Looking at external career development opportunities. I think some people here may well have been on the Aurora. That's now been opened up to the staff at Glasgow University. And we've got a tie up with the College of Glasgow. I know I'm getting fired through these things. I'm, I'm really, I really want Brian to, to speak at the end here as well. So Aurora, it's advanced HE leadership. We've got a lot of the senior uh, technical staff, female members of staff who have been on it. They've actually got their own wee network now. So that's a senior leadership. There is a cost in it. The university paid for that. So these are the areas it looks at identity, impact employees, core leadership, politics and influence, and adaptive leadership skills. This has gone down really, really well. And I know some of my technicians have been on it and they, they said it's fantastic. It's really good. So the city of Glasgow, we tied this up, Ali tied this up through the um, apprenticeship levy. So what we decided was we'll, we'll try and take something external to the university. So with essential skills, this was grades three to five. So what they did was, you'll see it's just on screen here, there's 15 in each. So what you would do is 15 people and you go four times on a Friday, I think it was. They go along, they get a certificate at the end of it, and these are the types of things that they did. Um, they found it really good to get outside the university, even though it was online. Um, and that's went down really, really well as well. This was a really good thing for our senior staff, grade sixes to seven. It was a chartered management institute. So what they do is, again, you pick one of these modules um, and you go and do it for four weeks or five weeks. I can't remember what it was. It's five, six weeks, I think it was, on a Friday. Um, at the end of it, you get a certificate from the Chartered Management Institute. And if you want to take on yourself, you can take on. I have to say, all of these courses were oversubscribed. So we had to nominate people as well. The other thing we've done is, the last thing is we've, we've instigated some awards for the James Watt Technician of the Year Award for Glasgow University. This is the first year we've ran it. Um, one of Brian's group won it, an engineer, which is which was really quite good because, as we all know, James Watt was an engineer. Um, and the university put a prize up. So the prize was £1,000. So it was, it was a, quite a significant award, but it was great. And we saw all the things that people have done. We've also put in... Um, we'll get four technicians shortlisted within the Papan Awards. 
Um, so we're trying to look at external awards as well and a team award for the Lighthouse. So I'm going to hand over to Brian now. Hopefully I fired through that. He's probably, can you understand the word I'm saying? I'm going to hand over to Brian now to tell us some of the things that he's doing on the ground in engineering. Brian. Um, we do not represent the true Glaswegian accent, so um, you're kind of no, getting the no, first. <laughs> you're getting the first version of Glaswegian. Um, <laughs> thank you, Paul. Uh, Paul just wants me to put some um, flesh in the bones of the high-level um, things you've seen they were doing at Glasgow, and um, just a, through a technician commitment, we've got much more um, senior technician um, networking. Therefore, we're able to tap into each other's resources, and for me. Ryan, you're gone. I don't think Glasgow University's Wi-Fi is great this well. No, I think we've lost Brian, haven't we? Lost Brian. I'll kind of talk over some of the stuff he's, I think he's, he, he's probably going to talk about. Is that he also, Brian also tapped into uh, Glasgow College and sent some of his technicians on train the trainer so that they could train people up. He's also used some of our resources within MVLS, we bought a lot of um, simulations for experiments for, for students to use during the Briony back. Yeah, sorry. Okay, you go. Um, so uh, just to, to cut a long story short, um, because people couldn't come in on campus um, as regularly as we'd hoped during that time, we looked for other opportunities. So um, we found a learn science lab simulation software for um for um, aimed at students and we use that um as a, a a training resource for our um our team and um, for the more senior technicians and for the lab assistants therefore when we could go on campus they already had a background the theory and understood all the techniques before they joined us um in, in the lab and that proved to be um, less scary for them doing new techniques and um, worked out really well. We're also able to tap into other parts of the university where uh, they may have not fully opened labs and therefore the technicians were available to provide training. Um, so Paul's team provided training, one-to-one um, -one training. Again, we had to deal with distancing and all of that. The, 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 the good point is, um, so, so I, I was looking at my team, how can I give my team more flexibility, more hybrid working? So the two lab assistants to do their jobs fully could only do their jobs on campus. But the fact that we could give them online training and a couple of laptops, they could also enjoy being able to do their job, a part of the job from home. Um, they could organize their own day a bit more fully. And we, we enjoyed, the, they enjoyed having that freedom as well. Um, the, the outcome is that we now have um, two highly qualified grade three technicians. Uh, their, their, their learning with, um, capacity was amazing. And they, they are now helping students with DNA extraction. They're helping students um, with my, microbiology um, techniques. And they're help, helping students with microscopy techniques. Um, again, above and beyond uh, the expectation of the role they're currently in. Um, so um, seeing the slide from the colleagues at um, Imperial, you know, where the, 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 the technical manager is seen as um, somebody who's hindering development here at Glasgow, certainly in engineering, all the technicians and leadership roles are told to put the technician commitment uh, front and centre of all of their thinking. So looking for opportunities to show the work of their team, looking for opportunities to record that and, and have a good news story around about that. So hopefully that gave you a little flavour of something practical. Brian, Brian, you just you there. You, Brian yeah. I was just explaining, could you just briefly explain about your, your tie up with Glasgow College? Um, so I've been using Glasgow College. Glasgow City College um, are a, a local um, college of further education. Um, and we're, you know, um, like probably many parts of the UK, there are certain areas um, of education that was not provided locally by our colleges of further education, therefore. Um, but one thing our local college did was um, training for trainers um, is the simplest way of putting it. So our student-facing technicians who were either um, delivering one-to-one um, -one training on equipment or in teaching labs, um, explaining experiments, um, we sent them on a, similar to what you've seen in the other course, a four-day course, um, accredited course, 
um, they learned how to um, techniques to deliver. Um, they, they did a, a group project. They had to deliver this um, practical session to their peers, and then they had to do a thousand word um, a write up on the, the methodology for present, presenting a, a topic to students. Um, and, you know, so the, it was very, very um, intensive. Um, you probably uh, have similar situations where your staff go to a one or two day training and they come back and nothing changes. Um, these kind of courses, you know, we're, we're expecting that to change on the ground and we have seen a, an improved quality in, in terms of people, how they conduct themselves and carry themselves in the teaching labs and um, their own confidence in sharing um, a subject they know very, very well, but maybe not able to put it across to another, another audience. So that's been very successful. We use them, um, we do a cycle every few years of um, refresher courses and of our, our new intake of, of, um, of technical staff. Um, so we, we call it training for trainers. So it's about um, presentation skills of a practical topic. Thanks for that, Brian. Brian. Thank so you. Thanks for, firstly, I should have said thanks very much to the NTDT for this call. Oh, no, thank you. Yeah, and thank for everybody you for coming along. Yeah, me, and Brian yeah. are, me and Brian are very willing to visit any universities within the West Indies, Aruba, uh, Hawaii, anything like that. <laughs> so, so please send the invites. What I will say just before I finish is if anybody wants to come up to Glasgow, and have a speak. We've had visitors before, we're more than welcome. And there'll be email addresses if you want to contact us. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Paul. Good. And thank you to Brian and to Ailish and to Alison for, for their time today and yeah, for a really insightful talk into what's happening at, at both Glasgow and Imperial. I think we've got a couple of minutes, not, not much time, but if, if Jedi, if, is there any questions that have been posted for, for our speakers? Yes, um, thank you very much. Um, John Warren had a question about if you've undertaken work to align your training program with the defined skills being captured in NCDC. And I think Ailish and Alison answered to that. So I just wanted to find out if, if John um, is it's okay with that. John, are you okay with those answers or do you want more elaboration? Um, I think it may be having some technical difficulties there. Um, the next question is from Angela and she's asking if, um, that is the University of Leeds. Um, Angela, if you don't mind, can you please unmute yourself and ask away? I can, I can answer it. I can answer it for Angela. Okay. What I was, she's probably, I mean, probably my accents can right over. It's just <laughs> what it was, was it's, it's Leeds. It's the uh, Learning Enhancement and Development and Teaching within Glasgow University. What I was trying to get across was when we actually sent it out at first, somebody thought they had to go to Leeds University to do it. But it's not, it's what it's called in the university. It's learning enhancement and development within teaching. So sorry about that. That's, that's, it's a well-known, but it happens all the time in the university. People think it's, it's Leeds. But that, it's our, you may be called different things in different universities, but it's our, these, the, these are the people that run all the learning learning training, how, how for academics to do lectures, to do these kind of things. So sorry, I'm now confusing everybody there. Okay, thank you. Thank you for clarifying that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so I, th I, think, I think we probably are just drawing to a, a close for this session. There is just a final wrap-up session straight after this. Um, if, if, if colleagues would, would like to to kind of post anything into the into the Padlet, which um, Jenny just put the link to, just for, for general questions in terms would, of how the NTDC just, can just further one, support. Just Sorry, one thing, on. Sarah. Just one thing, Sarah. I would say to people from from other universities is that we have we've really used the university um, facilities a lot, and I would say the only advice we've got is get yourself a technician commitment coordinator. They're really really helpful, but look around your own university as well. Because we've never had MD say no. We've never had MD, we've never went to MD and they've said no for it. So at the, and the technical managers I know are, are extremely keen, as Brian says, to develop people and get new ideas and share and share it around the university. Um, so that's the only thing I was saying. We've had fantastic support from everybody, human resources, EOD everybody leadership. So I would say my only advice would be is look around your own university, see if you can tap into things up there, and if not, then start looking at things. Thank you. 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 Thank you
Thank you. That's all. Thank you, Paul. And yeah, Sorry, and thank you for the offer for yeah for people to come and, and visit it yeah, no if all. they want to. So yeah, thank you again to Ailish and Alison and Paul and Brian um for, for all your time today. So it's it's been a, a really, a really fabulous session just to, to get that insight into all, all the great development work that's going on within your universities. Um so yeah, so if, if you'd like to all kind of join the next final session um, and yeah, bring any comments and, and questions to that. That would be much appreciated. So thank you again for your time and um, see you in the next session. See you later. Thank you, everybody. Bye now.